basically, they forgot to put me on the list. They booked me flights to New York. Nobody knew I was coming. I was trying to use the security guard's phone. Nobody was picking up, messaging my parents. I was like, there's no one here to pick me up. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video has been a long time coming. Most of you guys are my subscribers from my original exchange videos. So I thought it was about time that I finally make another exchange related video. So it is coming up on five years now that I left for my exchange. I left in the start of August of 2015. So it's coming up. So I felt like that is kind of a good you know, amount of time to then now be able to reflect on it and let you guys know the truth about being an exchange student. I haven't really made a plan. I have a few little bullet points, but it's really, I don't know how this video is going to go. <laughs> I guess I'll just start off by saying that truthfully, in my experience, doing an exchange was one of the best things I've done in my life. I was very, very fortunate to get a family who I am still extremely close with to this day. And I know that's often not the case. So I guess that's the first kind of point I want to make is that if you're thinking about doing an exchange, you're not guaranteed to end up in an amazing situation. That's the first thing you need to think about if you're going to do this, because I don't want to tell you that my experience was amazing. So your experience is going to be amazing because that's not always the truth. And it is a risk going to live with a random family. You never know how it's going to turn out, but I do think it's worth the risk. And it's really just the luck of the draw at the end of the day. In saying all that, I definitely don't think that the risk of it not working out should stop you from trying because there's also options like maybe you're not clicking with your family, you don't get along, you'd rather not live with them. You could always see if one of your friends you've made at school would be willing to host you even for like a short period while you find a new family or if they'd be willing to take you on for the whole year. That happened to one of my friends in America. You definitely don't have to feel like, oh, I've been here a month. Me and my host family, we really don't get along. I'm just going to go back to my home country because there are definitely options for you to change and really have the best exchange year possible. Something that I really want to emphasize and that I truly, truly stand by, you should not go with an exchange company who pay the host family because all that does of course there's some families who are nice and genuine and will actually like put in the work to make you feel at home but a majority of those families who are getting paid to host a student are just in it for the money and they do the absolute bare minimum i had a friend who went on exchange to spain and her host family was like that they were awful to her they were just in it for the money they didn't care about her at all and they wouldn't even let her like use the shower when they went home it was ridiculous but that's what happens when the host families are paid to host a student they just do it for the money on the upside of that when you do go through a company who doesn't pay the host families you know that the host families are just doing it because they want to have a student they want to be able to like learn about your country while showing you their country all that sort of thing you know it's a reciprocal kind of thing when they're not being incentivized, if that makes sense. Yeah, so that's really something that I stand by and I would not ever recommend going through an exchange company where the host family gets paid because that just allows for all kinds of problems. Something else that I think can really make or break your exchange experience is how you handle homesickness. Me personally, I've always been super independent, so I never really felt that homesick. Also because my family, we had like a Facebook group chat where we could just like update each other on what's going on, like how everything's going. So I was always kind of in contact with them. So I never really felt that homesick. Obviously there was a little bit because I couldn't actually see them and like hug them and everything. But yeah, some of my, friends who were also on exchange though they struggled a lot with being away from their family so if you're someone who thinks that would really affect you it is going to make it a little bit harder to enjoy yourself in the first few months but definitely if you push through it it does get easier there are a lot of ways to kind of like help that along as well um i've noticed that a lot of exchange companies really recommend not talking to your family which sounds crazy but they like recommend just trying to immerse yourself in 
um, the country you're in and your host family and everything and trying to keep like the contact like maybe skyping your family like once a month or something just so that you are not always thinking about your family like if you're always calling them and always texting them you're never really going to be like, immersed in your situation you're always going to be thinking about back home so i guess to sum it up the best thing you can do for your homesickness is to try your hardest just to push it aside and really focus on the current life you're living in that certain country and as awful as it sounds try and have less contact with your family in your home country because it really does help another thing that i want to touch on is how to choose the exchange company that you want to go with and the reason i want to talk about this is because i do get messages still from people who have seen all my old videos um, asking me how I made the decision myself and I love getting messages from you guys by the way don't ever feel like you can't message me even though it's been like five years because I will always answer exchange messages that I get I love talking to people about it but anyways the reason I want to touch on this is because of the fact that the reasons that I chose one company over the other they don't apply anymore so when I used to recommend one company over the other I can't really do that anymore because of the reasons I'll explain. <laughs> so basically, I was deciding between STS and Student Exchange New Zealand Australia, as a lot of people from New Zealand are, those are the two main companies. Basically, they seem very similar. They both were around the same price, they had the same kind of like rules and regulations, all that kind of stuff. Everything seemed pretty much the same, except the difference was that with STS, you could pick your top three states and you would be offered out to families from those three states first. And that was really appealing to me because I had my top three states as California, Washington, and Oregon, I think, because I really wanted to be on the West Coast. I was very, very, very fortunate in this because I had California as my top state. I really wanted to be put in California. And luckily I was chosen by a family in California. And that's really what made me choose STS over Student Exchange New Zealand Australia because the second company didn't have the option of state choice. Now though, STS has removed that option. They don't let you do it anymore, I don't think. And I can see why, because it was a hassle. They ended up first, like I picked state choice and I paid the extra fee. And then they ended up putting me with an American um, exchange company who didn't even allow state choice. So I was like, why did I pay this extra? and then the secondary company won't let me do it. And so they had to put me with another company and like I had to redo all the forms and everything. So it definitely was a hassle, but I don't know if that's how it always is. Maybe it was just like <laughs> a lot of the stuff that I went through. They just kept mucking stuff up all over the place. That was pretty much the only reason why I chose STS over Student Exchange New Zealand Australia. So really, I think you can't go wrong with either one. Those are the two most well-known and successful exchange companies in New Zealand. And also you don't really deal with them that much once you're in the country. Pretty much as soon as you've like paid and everything's, your applications all done and everything, they immediately um, transfer you to an American exchange company who then does the host family search and like all that kind of stuff. And then you basically, once you're in America, you are in contact with your American exchange company primarily. You still like every now and then have to update your New Zealand one. Basically, the New Zealand company is what gets you there. The American company is who you actually deal with the most though. I did, however, and I don't know if this is just my experience or if this is something that happens often, is I did find that STS were very, very, very unorganized in a lot of aspects. For example, when I did the prep course in New York with like 80 other people from like Europe and all these other countries, we all, at the very start of our exchange, we had this like week in New York where we kind of had an orientation. Um, basically, they forgot to put me on the list. They booked me flights to New York. Nobody knew I was coming, even though I had these flights that they had booked me to New York. So I arrived in New York at like 7 a.m. or something. And I waited, <laughs> waited to be picked up. Hours went by. I was trying to call them, their helpline was unattended it was meant to be a 24-hour helpline nobody was picking up don't know what that was about my phone wasn't even working because i hadn't got an american sim so i was trying to use the security guard's phone to ring their helpline i wasn't getting through to anyone so i was trying to get them to page sts over the speakers so they could find me because i also wasn't really given any directions of where to go to meet them 
so there was that too and i was <laughs> freaking out and i was running out of wi-fi so i had to buy wi-fi so that i could stay in contact it was like 3 a.m in new zealand i was messaging my parents i was like there's no one here to pick me up nobody has come for me i don't know what i'm doing and then <laughs> eventually after like five hours we got through to them and they were like what we didn't even know she was coming they came to pick me up <laughs> and it was like midday at this point i think and like we got taken what well, we i got taken back to this um college campus where we were staying and they were all like everyone else is arriving at like 3 p.m so we didn't even know we had to go pick someone up that early ridiculous but in the end they were like very nice this was like the sds people as well that were there they were all super nice they like got me all sorted i got given a roommate and everything so it wasn't like i didn't have anywhere to like sleep or stay or anything. It was all good. So it worked out and I had an amazing time at the prep course in New York, so. But I just don't understand how they can book me a ticket to go to this prep course and nobody knows I'm coming. But yeah, that was a great start to my exchange. <laughs> Luckily, it was all smooth sailing from there. I honestly had probably the best possible time I could have had. Even now, whenever I go back, I still will spend time like go stay with my host family and everything and when i was just in america just now on my working visa i even got to spend thanksgiving and christmas with my host family again so incredibly lucky in my experience it really is true when they say you do end up with a family for life so i guess i should also touch a little on the finance aspect of it because that's also a question that i do get often when you are researching into your exchange company you can see the prices on the website so it's definitely important to compare them all across the different agencies because there definitely is like an average cost and it's around fifteen thousand for a year to go to america so if you're looking at a website and it doesn't look really professional and the cost of the program is like five thousand dollars for a year I would definitely be wary of that. You never know like whether that company maybe doesn't vet, police vet their um, host families, you know, it could just end badly. So yeah, definitely don't just go for the cheapest option, no matter how appealing that may be. There are companies like Rotary who are cheaper. I think it was something like $8,000 when I looked into it. But with companies like that, you sign up to be an exchange student and you don't get to choose what country you go to. You can say like, I wanna go to America. And I think they sent like one person to America each year or maybe like a couple or something. You have to write like an essay, you have to make this video explaining why you'd be the best representative to go to America, all this stuff. And then even after you've done all that, you might get sent to like Brazil or something. And then you're like, fuck, I didn't learn any of this language. And you like, I don't know, you know, it's risky in that respect. I can't really talk too much on Rotary though because I honestly didn't look that far into it after I found out that you're not guaranteed what country you go to. Uh, that was a deal breaker for me, so I just didn't, I stopped looking into it. Another thing you need to take into account is that you're not allowed to work while you're an exchange student. So you do need to also have enough money as like pocket money, spending money when you're over there because you otherwise have no way of getting money. So for me, I saved an extra $5,000. So that gave me $500 a month while I was there. That was most of the time enough. I was able to do like dance classes and school field trips, all that sort of thing. And I felt like I had enough money. I didn't often do much shopping or anything. So if you're someone who is like wanting to go to America and do lots of shopping, you'll definitely need a lot more. But I feel like just for every day, like school trips and like whatever extracurriculars you want to do, having that extra money is definitely necessary and you also have to keep in mind the exchange rate because $500 New Zealand is what I'd saved for each month and that translated into 300 American dollars a month which when you break it down is only $75 a week so if you think you're going to be someone who would spend more than $75 a week on like maybe Starbucks shopping eating out with friends plus also accounting for like a field trip each month or whatever yeah you just have to really kind of budget for what you think you'll need but I really recommend $300 American a month minimum. Otherwise you might find yourself not being able to do school trips and like fun things with friends. And that's really what you're there for. You're there to do all the school programs and like hang out with friends and do fun stuff. So you really don't want to be hindered by the fact that you don't have money and you can't work. 
Another thing that I often get asked is about grades. So in order to do an exchange, if you're a New Zealander, you do have to be getting passing grades for everything. You can't be failing your New Zealand classes. You do have to be an average student at least. And then while you're in America, you also have to maintain a C average. So you can't be just skipping class and like failing all your subjects and everything like that. You do have to maintain that C average, which honestly isn't hard in my experience. Especially if you're from a European country, you're probably working at a higher level than what you'll be doing in the grade you get placed in in America anyway. So yeah, in my experience, all the exchange students I knew, none of them struggled in school because everything that they'd been doing back home was at the same or a higher level anyway. Another thing that you have to think about before you leave New Zealand is how you're going to continue your education once you go back to New Zealand. For example, if you're doing an exchange in year 11, you'll have to leave halfway through year 11 and you'll be coming back halfway through year 12 because the school year is different in America and they start in June, whereas in New Zealand, the school year starts in like January. You do end up <laughs> disrupting your school year if you leave New Zealand. So basically what happens is say you leave in year 11, you leave halfway through, you get back, all your friends are halfway through year 12, you have to go back to where you left off halfway through year 11. So that is definitely something to consider is that you can't just skip basically a year of New Zealand school because your American grades don't actually count for anything in New Zealand. It's slightly different when you leave halfway through year 13 like I did. You could go back to where you left off and finish year 13 or you can do what I did and you can earn enough credits to graduate early. This is definitely the way that I prefer I definitely would not have wanted to come back and do an extra six months of school when my friends had already graduated. But yeah, what I did is I picked subjects for year 13 that were very internal assessment heavy. So that meant that I could just like pull everything forward, do it early, get the credits and then leave. So the subjects that I did for my year 13 was English, dance, drama and two sewing classes. And the reason I did this is because dance, drama and sewing are mostly internals and they're internals that you can do independently at any time. So I was able to work independently from my classmates and just like try and do everything all at once and get all my credits that way. And then also in English class, I was kind of able to do this as well. Things like portfolio and connections report, they weren't really done until like term three and term four. But while my class was working on stuff for like externals, I would be in like the library working on my connections and portfolio all that by myself. So you definitely have to be self-motivated if you're wanting to go down that track because you basically are going to be working pretty much independently to try and get all your schoolwork done in six months. <laughs> but it was so worth it for me because it meant I didn't have to worry about trying to repeat the year when I got back. And I would 100% recommend doing that to anyone. It's, oh, it's just so much easier. And it also meant I didn't have to do externals, which is amazing because everybody knows the English externals in year 13 are horrendous. And I just didn't have to do it because I'd already graduated English because I'd gotten all my internal credits done. And let me tell you, there is no better feeling. <laughs> have I discussed everything? I don't know, but I'm sick of hearing my own voice. So I'm going to end this video here. <laughs> Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope this video was informative. I hope that maybe it was nice for some of you old subscribers to have me go back to an exchange video. It's been a hot minute. Thank you so much if you're still here from back then. If you've been watching my videos since 2015, please leave a comment. I'd love to know who's still here, who's been watching since then, because it's so sweet. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.